And now from the Freedom First Sports Desk, it's First and Ten with John Apicello, sponsored by... Welcome to another season of First and Ten, and yes, I'm having deja vu all over again. I don't think we can go wrong channeling Groundhog Day, so this is one time where television really fails to capture the true excitement of a large squirrel predicting the weather. Good thing this is a football show, so I redirect you to our website, WSLS.com, First and Ten. It is first rate, as always. Tonight, Samantha and Nicole have the controls. Now, the game of the week, two teams with tradition, talent, and consistent results. Both playoff teams in the spring. 10 Sports' Eric Johnson was in Brookville, where all eyes were on the Patriots' offense, but it would be the Bees' offense that delivered the sting. Both Brookville and Patrick Henry are two high-caliber teams that have no shortage of talent, which means the difference tonight would come down to limiting mistakes and executing at a very high level. Certainly a great sight to see fans out here at the Beehive yet again. The Bees paying tribute to fallen coach Scott Hunt on their first drive of the game by establishing the run game early and often. That's until PH defense got in on the action, coming up with the fourth down stop on that drive. However, Brookville's defense returning the favor. Tayshawn Butler serving up all sorts of plays tonight, gets the interception. He would turn that into a touchdown on the ensuing drive for the 7-0 lead. Then they go to the air. The return of the Mac, Drake McDaniel to Ethan Roby, 28 yards on a dime. 14-0 lead for the Bees. PH offense a little flat tonight while the Bees kept on a buzzing. Silas Rucker getting in on the action. Touchdown run right up the gut. They weren't done right there. Floating like a butterfly, stinging like the Bees they are. Butler, this time a 57-yard touchdown catch. Shake, rattle, and roll as he gets to the end zone. 28-0 lead at half. Halftime, PH would get on the board late, but the Bees take this one 35 to 15. We just always pride ourselves on flying around on defense and making up a mistake with hustle. And I thought tonight was no different. We made plenty of mistakes, but our guys take pride on trying to get 11 hats to the ball. And sometimes when things go wrong, that, that bails you out. First game, you know, first time we ever had fans in a long time. So, you know, it's had me fired up. I was ready to make some plays, make everybody proud. So I think this was a good momentum boost right here, knowing just knowing where we're at. You know, we got a new team, and it really showed us where we're at compared to other people. Of course, coaches are always looking for room for improvement, which is why Coach Meeks told his team after this one, quote, let's make this our worst performance of the season, which tells me good luck to any team that runs into Brookville anytime soon, especially here at Stinger Stadium. As for Patrick Henry, they'll go back to the drawing boards to have an open week early in the season next week before they return to action in week three. In Lynchburg, Eric Johnson, 10 Sports. All right, thanks, Eric. Two more big-time matchups in the Lynchburg area tonight, including state semifinalist LCA hosting another proud program in Magna Vista. These two don't get together very often. We are on the campus of Liberty University. LCA, the ball. This is Davis Lane connecting with Jalen Belford. That's about a 60-yard throw and catch. That's going to set up the running back, Caleb Davidson, and he powers in. Bulldogs go up 6-0. Now the Warriors fumbled on the kickoff return, recovered by the Bulldogs. Minutes later, second and goal. Belford would find another hole for a touchdown. Here he comes. Now, kicker missed both extra points. So we're up 12-0, but later in the first quarter, Lane going to Caleb Sears, and Zoya wouldn't want to be anytime soon. He is gone. This one all LCA. How about 60-14 to over Magna Vista? Lord Botata State runner-ups in Class 3 at EC Glass. Hilltoppers up and looking for more. George White to Eli Wood. It's 21-0. Hilltoppers. Time winding down first quarter. Third and 10. It's White to Wood again. 35-yard haul in right there to set up first and goal. Second quarter. Fourth and 28 for EC Glass. White to Markavius Graves along the sideline. Hilltoppers were up 28 to nothing. This game was 41-7, but Lord Botetot roared back to make it interesting. 41-30, Glass was victorious in a battle of two teams that, frankly, we expect to see come playoff time. Scores for you, Burt Torrance's debut with the Red Devils is victorious, 53-13. Big win for him. Congrats, Gretna 12-9 over JF. More scores from the Mountain Empire and the Hogehege. Rural Retreat gets by the Fort, 12-7. Chill Howie, 27-22 over Marion. 
Well, what if there is no tomorrow? There wasn't one today. Then it's tonight that matters most. And we'll see if the Vikings can handle the Cougars' invasion. Can the Colonels pick up where they left off in the spring to remember? And is the green wave still crashing down on all comers? Plus this. And thanks to the Highlanders for the tunes, and we'll check in there in segment three. But first, the Vikings of Northside taking on a rejuvenated Pulaski team under coach Mark Dixon. Keep in mind that Scott Fisher would get it done as well tonight. Drawn first blood, Nathaniel Funk off the corner, special teams play, blocking the rock. That's going to set him up in the red zone. First and goal Vikings, Cameron Abshire diving in, north side up early 7 to nothing. But Mark Dixon's gang's going to strike back. It would take a little while for them to get warming to the task, but Cam Cooper hits senior J.J. Gully on the slant, and J.J. now the second most famous J.J. ever in the city of Roanoke. With the touchdown right there, we know who the other guy was. He played basketball. 7-7. The Vikings led 10-7, but Pulaski's defense stood strong, and they roared back 20-17. to The Cougars with a big win in Roanoke this evening. How about Liberty at William Byrd? Liberty's rushing attack looking dangerous and polished. Tanner Stanley pulls the dive, fakes the pitch, rambles inside the five to set up a touchdown. It was 6-0. More minute men. It's Stanley. Little counter action. The senior knows what to do with it. The need for speed. And he is off the pylon and in for another touchdown. But Byrd has an answer. Sophomore Israel Hairston, direct snap. He's hunting the goal line, and he's finding it right there. But the night belongs to Liberty. Jordan Steele had a nice game, including an interception. Liberty 33-28. to Two programs on the rise. Bassett and Franklin County got together. Bassett 42 to 25. And this game was flipped. So Stanton River was supposed to be away. They ended up being home. And you know what? They cashed in in front of the home crowd. Nice. 48 to 16. Which brings us to a couple more teams that had playoff runs. Heritage, 3C usual suspect. William Fleming. Class 5 state semifinalist. Brooke, which team was able to carry all that momentum from the spring into tonight's collision? I mean, if we're looking at talent return from last year, both teams. I mean, that's why we picked it for a breakdown. (laughs) That's right. This is an insane game, and tonight it was truly the battle of the twos, all right? For Fleming, we know him. Former first and 10 player of the week, Deshaun Lewis. Here he is breaking up a huge play by Heritage, getting the ball back for the Colonels early in the game. Then later, he's going to send a bomb downfield to Micah Jones. No surprise that Lewis still has gas in his tank. All right, and number two for Heritage coming up is Zach Steele. Appy, I may have finally found a player faster than you. That's not hard to do. Well, I was going to say, that's saying something. Former cross-country runner over here. This kid has jets. He's scrambling for a first down. Actually, let's rewind that. He is hurtling for a first down. Very nice. Athletic. And again, grabbing a touchdown to put Heritage up by 13. Both teams with impressive offensive output, but the Heritage secondary adds to the star of approval. Pioneers get the win on the road, 33-18. to It was about a battle of attrition. Um, It's hot. You know, I think both teams not having a scrimmage, you're one one scrimmage down in terms of conditioning. Um, You know, I think in the second half, it's about who wants it more. Um, and we just made a little bit, you know, we just made a couple more plays, but it's not pretty, but your first game's never going to be pretty. And both teams didn't have the one scrimmage. So, you know, it's a different year. You got to adapt and overcome. Uh, we're happy to come out with the W. And, uh, you know, that's a very good football team. And I give credit to Coach Lovelace and, and, and William Fleming. All right. And the test continues for Heritage. They face Dinwiddie next Friday. Back to you, Appy. All right, thank you much. If Salem is looking for a program that has its tradition, then look no further than Martinsburg, West Virginia, Eight 3A state titles since 2010. They welcomed them in tonight. So let's strike up the band and get ready. Martinsburg's running back is Xavion Kendall. He's taken it five yards to the corner on the quick pitch, and he is in. Some nice blocking right there. It's 7-0. Salem's Cam Leftwich is going to answer. Watch right here as this is Salem football. Hat on a hat, and there's some room. Off tackle. 
43 yards to the three-yard line left, which would add the touchdown to make it 7-7 as he powers in right here. But the Bulldogs, Murphy Clement, a three-yard run right here, and just offensive effort. Their offensive line getting it done. 14-7 Bulldogs lead. Salem was knocking at the door and couldn't punch it in. That might have changed the momentum of this game. Martinsburg 35, Salem 21 tonight. How about Hidden Valley at Cave Spring? Yeah, the rivalry renewed at Bogle. Sam Dragovich here going deep to Braxton Dunnings. So alone he could use a dating service. That is ridiculous. Great play and a touchdown. Hidden Valley, though, uh, loses the football right here. Cave Spring, some nice defense. Tyler Poff is on it for the recovery. And Coach Leftwich could only watch Cave Spring getting it ready. Landon Altizer here. Long run for the touchdown. Misdirection right here to cash that thing in. But the same combination again. Dragovich to Dunnings again. And there he is all alone again. 14-6 the score. It ended up 14-12. Hidden Valley is victorious. More River Ridge scores for you. Giles over Blacksburg, 28 to 21. Christiansburg and Floyd will happen tomorrow. One of the great under-publicized teams of the past five years around here, Narrows. They didn't allow a single point during the spring regular season. Tonight they open at Auburn, and they were in control throughout that game. Auburn students showing up. Auburn trying to get something going. Landon Mars to Brady Hale. Nice play right here. A little bit later on, Mars doing it again, this time to Isaiah Keith. Nice play, Auburn in business. But Narrows bringing the defense like they always do. Watch Mars passing. And how about Max McLaughlin with the interception for Narrows. Narrows pitches yet another shutout, 26 to nothing. Rockbridge County at Perry McClure as we got another rivalry renewed. Fighting Blues taking the field, and here we go. Perry McClure's... Brennan Shiley taking a shot but finds Dylan Kreitzer over the middle uh, to pick up a third down conversion. Later in the drive, this is Austin Higgins. Blindside sack, forced fumble, Peyton Matz recovery, keeping the game scoreless. Late first, Shiley finds John Snyder who picks up a third and 11, getting the Blues inside the five. That would set up Snyder for a short yard. It's touchdown. The halftime score was 6-0, but Rockbridge rallied for a 14-6 Victory. More scores for you. Covington over Bath, 22 zip. Bland by two over Craig, 8 to 6. And how about Eastmont? They fell to Holston, 38 to nothing. Grayson County and Allegheny, North Carolina. And Grayson falls by a field goal. Applicable to all, not just the groundhog. Don't drive angry. Don't drive angry. Glenver's drive begins tonight. Did the Highlanders or the Maroon Tide grab the wheel? Next in sports. Oh, it's okay. No one ever types them in. Oh, it's okay. All right, James River hosting Buffalo Gap tonight. Here we go from Buchanan, second quarter. Buffalo Gap up 14-7. James River's Zeal Hammonds, 20-yard completion to Ben Bailey to get into Gap territory. End of the first half, Buffalo Gap trying to get a quick score. Curtis Lowe deep to Luke Tinsley, wrestling the ball away from the DB right there. Spectacular catch, 14-7-0, the halftime score. Third quarter, 57-yard video game-like touchdown run by Bryce Hildebrand. Brand, look at him book the move and groove and I don't see him hitting anybody so he's not a, well he could be the rolling ball of butcher knives but he's not he's not he's the he's officially the uh, video game right run of the week right. 30 to 7 <laughs> Buffalo Gap is victorious all right Brooke joins us again it feels like the three rivers always produces a class two contender 
Tonight, couple had challenges from Class 1 programs. We know about Glenver. We know about Radford. Both of them actually had to play good games tonight. Yeah, and, you know, in our camp tour, Glenver said that they had low numbers, but it certainly didn't seem to hinder the talent. Okay. Tonight, they take the field for home opener against the Maroon Tide. Galax's quarterback, Ian Ashworth, keeps the ball, goes up the middle, and then makes a good cut and sprints in for the 32-yard touchdown at 7 Nothing. Glenver is going to get on the board early in the second quarter. Quarterback Aiden Walk drops back and fires this pass to Jackson Swanson, wow. who takes it in for the 70 yard touchdown. Both teams tied 7 to 7. The Maroon Tide going for it on fourth down. Quarterback Ian Ashworth takes a few steps Ooh. back, but is taken down by Nicholas Woodson. The Highlanders get the ball back. That would set them up for this touchdown. Walk looks and passes the ball, but it's tipped. But lucky for him, Dagan Williams was Johnny on the spot and takes it in for the 30-yard touchdown. Glenver beats Galax 28-14. to all right, George Wythe is at Radford tonight. Here come the Bobcats. George Wythe strikes first. Luke Jolly with a bomb to Layden Houston. Early 6-0 nice lead catch. for okay. George Wythe, right? All right, and here, how nice is it to have fans back? That's I awesome. I know, and the students are fired up. So good. All right, Tyrell Dobson oh, rips the ball them. out. And it's a Radford ball. That's some nice defense. Now yeah. it's time to cash it in. Marcel Baylor calls his own number with some fancy footwork here. One Juke finds the pylon. More Radford on the kickoff return. Kamar Potter. Wait for it. It's this good. Takes it in. Little spin move. Stop and go. Oh nice gosh. return. Look leads, at that move. Leads to a Bobcat touchdown. Radford not missing a beat. They beat George with 35 to 6. Some more scores. Roanoke Catholic beats Allegheny well, 43 around, to okay. 6. Yeah, it was Allegheny. The Mountaineers won tonight. And then Carroll County, Patrick County postponed to October 15th. Thank you very much, Brooks. Some good work right there. And I love the traffic directing of the quarterback there. He was <laughs> telling guys where to be. All right, scores for you. Tunstall over Dan River, 26-14. Appomattox and Buckingham County, they were postponed. Chatham all over Prince Edward and Central Lunenburg over Alta Vista, 41 to 13. Couple more for you. Halifax, the Comets get it done, 42 to 8. And North Cross all over Suffolk tonight, 31 to 6. All right, it's a presentation 58 years in the making. Wendell Scott's family will finally get a trophy for that 1963 victory at Jacksonville. Going to happen at the Coke 0400 at Daytona this weekend. Scott is the only black driver to win a NASCAR race at the sport's highest level. The historic moment wasn't celebrated in the way that it should have been. It is certainly one of the most iconic and monumental moments in American stock car racing history, but dare I say even motorsports history. This will lay up a really solid foundation to build on. Not saying they don't have a foundation now, but of course, this is the one thing that... Uh, you know, we get it right, you know. I'm probably just saying when you, when you learn better, you do better. Indeed, and that is a long time coming. Year 16 of the Appy version of First and 10 underway. Twas a fine show indeed, folks. We will see you next week.